Hello folks, thanks for joining us. Um, I've just had a firing in the, in the kiln and uh, just unpacked it actually this morning. And um, so I thought we'd just talk about a few pots quickly before the sun completely goes. I was hoping to have been here a bit earlier, but anyway, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to switch the camera onto like a, a, a different focus and I want to bring the pot kind of into the sunlight here and we just just a few there's a few nice ones and a few frustrations you know as as often is the case we had some um, we were quite successful with the with the bottle bottle vases and um, this is like an uh, 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 an iron slip which is scratched through uh, and then has a bisque fired and then a, a whitish glaze put over the top in fact the same the same glaze that you see over this little bud vase this whitey glaze goes on top of the iron slip gives a rather nice um, you can just put the focus in a touch. You can see the the iron spotting coming through the scraffito work there. Um, that's a good a good example actually that one. Uh, some other good examples. This one is also a fine example. I I like very much the the bluey grey that you you can get with enough reduction. It gives you this rather nice effect. Um, this is another nice little bud vase here, done in the style of my father with a foxglove decoration, and quite nice iron breaking there. Can you see that? Um, and then the a little bit of blue there from the the, the cobalt. That's a good example. I'm going to show you one though that is not so good, quite, just so you've got something to see, to compare. The iron is not quite strong enough here. You see the whole thing about using pigments is getting the right strength. And you can see the two there side by side. Uh, this one here is, in my, in my personal opinion, is nicer, more interesting. Again, here we have a little squashed, a little squashed uh, bud vase with again with the foxglove decoration on the side these are just pushed out of shape and trimmed um, on the bases there okay um, yeah this is a very a very nice nice example this one of scraffito that's the iron slip and then scratching through and it's leather hard and then bisque firing and then the white glaze over the top. That one came out rather nicely, I thought. Other pots, other pots that are, are worth mentioning are these, these little um, uh, squashed GP bowls with the small little loop handles on each end. This is just simply the uh, cobalt uh, decorated on the inside but not, dec not cobalt on its own. Cobalt with iron oxides and manganese to tone it down so you get this rather nice grey blue which I think is, is, is attractive. They're nice little dishes though. Okay, um, yeah, moving on. This is uh, a little bud vase. This is a new decoration. I've ne never done this one before, but I, I was quite happy with it. It was a lively decoration, and it worked quite well. The, the cobalt behaved itself, and the, the iron oxide also behaving itself quite nicely, firing to a nice little example of a bud vase. So we'll have to, we'll have to put that... Put that decoration to remember it for a, another time, you know. Um, 
what else? I can't remember if I showed you this one. Um, this one is actually a very nice example. As good an example as I could have hoped to have possibly got using this combination of glaze. This is like, if you're going to grade it, this is like category A. This is what I, was what I consider to be, for me personally, um, a, a really, a very nice piece. A peach. <laughs> you call it a peach, that one. Very nice. We get a few of those, don't we, sometimes? A few peaches. Hey, uh, what else? Um, oh. Yeah, I had a selection. I'll show you. These, these, these fired actually quite well. These fire like that in the kiln, face, face to face, you see. But I've got lots of different little motifs on the inside. Um... So they're all different. There's that one. Here's another one. Again, the foxglove of my my father's. And this is a an almond tree from Spain. These are these are examples of um, little birds. couple of them. What else? Yeah, I got some repeats. This is a, again, just a simple, a simple branch or a simple um, few strokes of a brush. Nothing really complicated. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? Keeping it simple, stupid. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just enough, not too much, just enough. Just hitting it that right, that right amount, isn't it? Not over decorated, not under, just, just, just right, you know? Um, I had some, yeah, this is a tankard. This came out. Not bad, not bad. I'd like the iron to be in a bit stronger, perhaps on the top here. Yeah, not not too bad. Average, a good average. Um, this is uh, a jazzy one, isn't it? This is uh, this is actually little flecks of wax painted painted onto the onto this tankard, and then dipped in the red iron oxide slip when it was leather hard then bisque fired and then covered over with a white glaze but you know something you'll notice about this it's rather reddish isn't it and that's because the the red iron oxide slip underneath the glaze overpowered the glaze and that was because the glaze was not put on thick enough you see the iron overpowered it from underneath so and the reason it wasn't put on thick enough was because, I don't know if you remember, but there were some of these that I did that were over-fired and they're a bit hard, the bisque, remember? When I, was, when I was glazing them, I was heating them up on the stove, you see, to try to, to at least get some, some covering of glaze. And that's something you, you should remember, you know, to, to do, to heat up your over-fired bisque, heat it up before you glaze it. You'll find it, you'll get a little bit thicker glaze application okay yes and then over here the, these these guys came out pretty nicely I thought little rather you know rather nice simple little pictures I I, I thought that they were simply simply decorated and then blown over with wood ash, you see, to get that toastiness on the outside, right? These are, these are all basically, basically the same, repeated, repeated forms with the same, the same treatment. 
So, yes, I was happy with them. I was happy, I was happy in their, I'll tell you what, I was happy in their simplicity and the fact that they fired just nicely. They were like an unpretentious kind of pot that you can use and would will give years and years of, of just pure, uh, pure joy unspeakable. <laughs> oh! Okay, moving on. Here we've got some uh, little uh, tea bowls with wax, red iron oxide slip. It, it came out quite nicely. I was quite pleased. Trimmed feet. So that was a couple of them. Here's another one. And another. Quite nice. I was quite happy. And then we had some nice ones here. These were very nice. They came out very well. I thought they were... Um, glazed on the inside only but they had a white a white slip on these actually there's a lot of treatments going on here and then iron oxide brush work and then wood ash from my fireplace sprayed over the outside you see that rather nice you can get some nice effects some nice little blushes there you see do you like them say yes <laughs> here again is another the same treatment it's just glazed on the inside but before it's glazed it has like a bit of white slip put over it and and hackamy but then i've got added iron oxide straight onto the bisque and wood ash you see blown on to give these little more little interesting I effects you see you can do quite a lot of things with wood ash if you just blow it on you see and um, all of these are the same kind of treatment, just different, slightly different, different, you know, in there. Um, each one is an individual piece. The light is fading, folks, in here, rather. Yeah, but they, they were quite nice. I was quite happy with them. Um, let's see. I had, a, I had a stack of GP bowls that were together, you know, fired in the usual way. Um, but, and this was, this was a nice little pouring GP bowl, you see. Yeah, don't you think that's nice? I think that's very nice. Simple, just a couple of banded lines. You know, nice everyday functional wear that is easy to live with. Not over decorated, over jazzed up, you know. Don't want that really. You look at that kind of stuff first thing in the morning, it'd give you a headache, wouldn't it? So, well, one of these GP bowls here, I'm looking to see which one it is. One of them had a crack. Got a little, a little crack in the edge there, you see. Well, that's unusual for these, because they've got rolled rims. It's unusual for them to crack, and it must have been that uh, sometime before the bisque firing they were in some way stressed perhaps i thought it wasn't quite round and tried to round it when it was a little bit too dry something like that so um so that's those guys
I did have I did have some pots that didn't really go the way I planned them. I will show them to you briefly. But these is perfectly well thrown and everything, but the the glaze, which is a Temaku glaze, has not really there's something happened to my Temaku glaze. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's 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 behaving in a strange way. It's not properly black as it usually is. So, but having said that, they're quite nice little pieces actually. Um, so that's those. We've had more tankards again in the this Temaku, but the Temaku not really not really properly black. So. I've got to do some investigation as to what is going on with my Temaku glaze and why it is behaving the way it is. So, again, a couple of little pieces here just before the light completely goes. A little covered, a little covered uh, jewellery box covered with um, uh, temaku it's got like a scalloped decoration which I did with a potato peeler and um, again that temaku glaze on here providing a different not what I was expecting but still acceptable result and this is a little one again a little small covered um, little covered box so there it is that's that's most of the pots that we had out. Uh, just to show you here again, another a bud vase type. But we've got some pro issues with bloating. I've got some bloating going on here. I just you know I'm working on this bloating thing. I'm getting bloating occurring, and uh, I've got to get to the bottom of it, and uh, you know get my bisque firing maybe a bit better because. Uh, bisque firing and maybe I had a, a low fire a bit of a low bisque fire and I don't think we properly burnt out all of the carbonaceous matter in the in the in the in the clay and um, getting some continuing problem with bloating but for those of you who don't know what bloating is um, you can see these little rays like blisters uh, uh, on the on the surface of the on the surface of the pot and they they are not not attractive for me they are, I, are something I really dislike um, I don't know why but I do but there you go anyway we're losing light folks but anyway I just wanted to let's get back to normal focus yeah I just wanted to, to show you a few of those things because um, Some funny little bees coming in my studio. <laughs> they attacked me yesterday. I was working and uh, this bee kept on coming, a little bee, and, and then it suddenly la launched itself at my, my, my apron because my apron was white or a light colour. And it sort of launched itself and it was trying to sting me, you know. It was like... <laughs> anyway... Yeah, thanks for joining us, and um, I hope there's something there that has inspired you. <laughs> and uh, it's it's always you know every firing that you every firing there's always something to learn, isn't there? Every time you open the kiln, you know you've got you've got those pots which are exceptional, and you've got those pots which are perplexing. You've got those pots where you scratch your head and you think, well, what did I do wrong there? Uh, you've got those pots which are very much, let's call them, uh, average pots. And then you've got pots, you know, that are clearly have gone wrong or cracked, uh, etc. And, um, you know, you have to learn from, your mis from our mistakes, don't we? For the things, those things that we've done wrong, um, try and rectify them next time. Make sure they don't happen, um, and so on. So, yeah. Um, but that's that's the life, isn't it, of a of a studio potter? That's that's very much, you know, we, you you have to take a philosophical 
approach to pots when they don't come out right. And quite often I have pots that don't come out, I don't like them sometimes when they come out of the kiln, you know? Because I have this thing in my mind that I think that they should be, or I want them to be in a certain way. And they come out of the kiln and they're not quite, they're not quite like what I was expecting, you know? So I have to do a sort of mental adjustment. And, and the, the way I do that usually is to take the pot and put it somewhere and don't look at it and just leave it for a bit. And um, quite often those pots that I didn't really like, actually I begin to like, I begin to like them more and more. And it's a funny process. It happens slowly, but you know, the, the, your, your immediate appreciation for a pot is not always apparent when you when you unload it from the kiln so be patient with your pots don't and don't uh, and don't have too um let's say you don't have too clearly defined objectives sometimes sometimes you, you need to have clearly defined objectives because you're trying to make something that's a repeat item you want the glaze to come out in a certain way you want a certain result because that's that's uh, that's required, you know, because I'm making a set because I want I don't want to have five co coffee mugs looking like so, like looking like very good and then have one that looks like is an oddball, you know, because it doesn't match. So, you know, but um, I'm probably talking a little bit more about individual type pots like tea bowls and things like that, that, you know, um, you have to, you know, be like that branch that bends in the wind, you know, bend a bit, you know, <laughs> bend your thinking, bend your, bend your, your rather fixed mindset that you might have, bend it a little bit, like the branch blowing in the wind, and, um, and you'll come perhaps later to a, a, another appreciation of your pot. Anyway, that's what I do in a, in a sort of, loose kind of way anyway folks i am uh, going to be in uh, seattle uh, flying out on saturday jennifer and i are flying out to seattle and doing a workshop in snohomish so big hello to all the people from snohomish and uh, looking forward to being with you and we're going to have uh, some days up there working and um making pots so it should be fun looking forward to that okay folks until next time <laughs> one more thing to say keep practicing we'll see you soon bye bye